In the year 2022, the Nobel Prize for Physics was awarded to these three scientists, Alain Aspect, Anton Zeilinger, John Clauser. Their work had helped settle a long-standing debate in quantum physics, a debate which had divided great minds like Niels Bohr and Albert Einstein. You know what was the headline which announced their victory? This was a headline that appeared in a leading science publication in the US. The universe is not locally real and the physics Nobel Prize winners proved it. The universe is not locally real? What does this mean? Surely quantum physics is not telling us that the universe is not real. And then your eyes go to that qualifier, locally. So that must mean something. Surely nobody can claim that universe is not real. So let's understand what this locally stands for. Locally is a technical term used to describe a principle in physics, a core principle in physics called the principle of locality. And this principle is derived from Einstein's theory of relativity. What does relativity tell us? Nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, isn't it? So locally, this qualifier locally alludes to this law. So if I were to translate this headline in layman's terms, this is what it would read. If Einstein's theory is right, if nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, then the universe is not real. That's what this headline says. And since we all know Einstein's theory has stood the test of time and there is no other theory in the corner which is about to disprove it, we can actually remove this qualifier locally. And then you will understand that quantum physics, physics is actually telling us that the universe is not real. This is a shocking headline, isn't it? It's shocking, it's mind-blowing, at the same time, strangely familiar. I've heard my grandmother say this often. And Vedanta, our ancient philosophy, has been reiterating this for thousands of, year, thousands of years. All of you would know that Vedanta refers to a series of texts that appear at the end of Vedas. All these texts are collectively called Vedanta and they are said to have been composed a few thousand years ago. And all of them consistently reiterate that the universe is not real. They use words like Maya, illusion, Mithya, unreal to describe the universe. So what does this mean? Is quantum physics and Vedanta saying the same thing? Or is it some strange coincidence? As a lifelong student of Vedanta and physics, I've been, fascinated, I've been fascinated by the stunning parallels between quantum physics and Vedanta. More importantly, I've been intrigued by the idea that the insights from these ancient texts, these ancient insights are the key to unlocking some of the deepest mysteries of modern physics. So today, I'll take you on a journey. First, let's understand what quantum physics means when it says that the universe is not real. For that, you need to understand this experiment. It's called the double slit experiment and it is the defining experiment of quantum physics. It showed us all how weird our world really is. So let me explain this in a simple manner. Let's say you're standing in front of a wall. There are two open windows in that wall and you're hurling basketballs at that wall. What would you expect? What do you expect would happen? When you throw a ba basketball, it, it will follow a certain trajectory. It will either bounce off the wall, it will pass through one window or the other. These are the only three things that can happen. But you remove the basketball and replace it with a fundamental particle, like an electron or a proton. And it does not behave anything like that basketball. It behaves like a wave. So what do, you, what do I mean by that? It, is spread it seems to be spread across the entire breadth of the wall. And strangely, each electron seems to be entering both the windows simultaneously. This was very weird behavior because a, a particle and wave are completely two different things. They don't resemble each other at all. A particle cannot logically behave like a wave. 
So what scientists decided to do, they tried to, you know, observe the electron to see why it is behaving in this weird manner. Let's see what is the trajectory the electron is taking, where exactly it's located. Then we will be able to understand why it's behaving in this manner. So they placed a detector to observe the electron. And as soon as they did that, you know what happened? The electron started behaving like that basketball. It was located in a one point in space. It followed a clearly defined trajectory. And as soon as they stopped observing it, as soon as they removed the detector, it started behaving like a wave again. So you can think of an electron as, a, you know, like a naughty child. When the mother is watching, it's properly behaved. And when the mother is not watching, it's all over the place. And I mean all over the place in a literal sense. When no one is watching, electron is not a single particle. It doesn't exist in a single definite state. It's as though the particle is everywhere it could possibly be and doing everything it could possibly be doing simultaneously. So think about it for a second. Before you observe an electron, it's not a single entity. It's billions of electrons in billion different states all existing simultaneously. This is what quantum physics tells us. This is called quantum superposition. So when does it become a single particle? Only when you observe it. When you try to know where the particle is, when you try to locate this particle, all the billions of particles, potential particles disappear and you get a single particle which can be in one particular location. So this is called the observer effect of quantum physics. You can think of it something like a virtual reality. So what happens in virtual reality when you put on glasses, certain set of pixels light up and you see something concrete like a vehicle or a person or a building. But once you remo remove the glasses, all of it disappears, isn't it? So you can think of the particle something like that. Before you observe it, it's just thousands of pixels on a screen. So as soon as you put your glasses, one of the pixel lights up and you feel that's the electron. You see, the electron is over there and it's got these properties. But once you remove your glasses, it still, it becomes those thousands of pixels on the screen. This is how you can understand quantum superposition. And this is why, or, uh, this is why our physicists said that an electron is not real. A particle is not real. Why? Because it does not have a permanent existence, it does not have an independent existence, and it does not have an objective exis existence. These are all the properties of real things, and electron seems to have none of these properties. And if electron is not real, uh, which is a fundamental particle, the entire universe is made up of these particles. So what would you call the universe? Universe is also not real. That's what that headline meant. This is what Niels Bohr said. Everything we call real is made up of things that cannot be regarded as real. If quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you, you have not yet understood it. And it did not shock normal people like you and me. Even the greatest minds had problems with this conclusion of quantum physics. Einstein was one of the biggest opposer of this interpretation of quantum mechanics. He said, what do you mean by this? It doesn't make sense at all. Do you really believe the moon is not there when you're not looking at it? So he had an alternate theory. He said quantum physics is right, but it's incomplete. It's missing a key piece of information. We are missing some hidden law of nature because of which the whole thing appears so weird. If we fill in this missing piece of information, if we are able to discover this hidden law of nature, then all this would make perfect sense. And for a long time, nobody could prove that we are not missing anything. Although it became increasingly clear that quantum physics was one of the best theories we have, it was perfect at explaining the workings of the universe, nobody could say that it's not missing some key piece of information. Until these scientists came along and experimentally proved that we are not missing inf any information, quantum physics is complete and is right, and its conclusions about the nature of the particle are correct. So this is what quantum physics means when it says universe is not real. So let us understand what Vedanta says about this. Vedanta not only proclaims that the universe is not real, it also goes on to say that the only thing that's real is consciousness. 
generally when you hear the word consciousness you think of higher order functions like reasoning decision making logical thinking etc but that's not what vedanta means when what vedanta means by consciousness is pure awareness like the awareness of deep sleep or the awareness of deep meditation when you have no thoughts clouding your brain and vedanta says the entire universe arises from this consciousness is sustained in this consciousness and it resolves into this consciousness and to explain this it uses a brilliant an- analogy that of a dream so when you dream there are so many things which pop up in your dream isn't it what are they all made up of your entire dream arises from your consciousness is sustained in your consciousness and it resolves into your consciousness what vedanta says is this is very similar to how brahman manifests the universe and let's try to understand this at a deeper level how do you create your dream do you take any materials from outside and stuff it into your brain and decide where each thing goes no you create your dream by simply witnessing it the only reason the dream comes into being is because you are seeing it let me ask you a question can anything exist in your dream which you don't see in fact the question itself is wrong the only reason a thing exists in your dream is because you're seeing it you're witnessing it anything which you don't see does not exist or cease to exist let's say you're dreaming about the night sky you're seeing the stars the galaxies the planets and the milky way and next minute your dream shifts you are in this room you are seeing all these people in front of you so what happened to those stars which you were just seeing a second ago uh, do they exist somewhere no they simply cease to exist what you don't witness does not exist at all in your dream and what vedanta says is this is how brahman creates the universe by simply witnessing it that's why vedanta gives a unique definition of brahman sakshi chaitanyam witness consciousness that consciousness which manifests the universe by simply witnessing it now can you see the parallels between these two subjects vedanta and quantum physics how they agree, agree at a fundamental level both vedanta and quantum physics say that universe is not real and both of them claim that you require an observer to bring the universe into existence and and you can see how you can use this to resolve the observer paradox of quantum physics how is it you are able to bring a particle into existence by simply observing it what vedanta says is that is the nature of consciousness that's how consciousness manifests the universe itself and this resonance is not at a superficial level you can ask deeper questions and vedanta will be able to give you answers for example some of you may be thinking okay even if i agree with you that there is a consciousness which brings the whole universe into existence by simply witnessing it how does it explain the fact that puny humans like you and me are able to bring a particle into existence they are two different things aren't they this feels like a giant leap that might have popped up in few of your minds and vedanta has an answer to this question also for that you need to go to the highest teaching of vedanta its greatest declarations so what vedanta says is that this consciousness which creates the whole universe is none other than your consciousness pragnanam brahma consciousness is brahman tatvam asi you are that brahman aham brahmasmi i am that brahman this incredible power to manifest the entire universe exists within you what is a small particle after all that's what vedanta is telling us and this is just an example vedanta has so many amazing insights all of which have the potential to answer the deepest questions of quantum physics all it requires us to do is to change our perspective to discard our material view of the world and embrace a consciousness centric understanding of reality in fact i would argue that all the discoveries in quantum physics is telling us to just do this the question is are we ready for it
Thank you.